So let me talk to you today about ceremony. So anytime that we ceremonially do something, let's say, um, let's talk about sacraments. So for example, let's say, you know, many people drink alcohol. They, they don't realize that the alcohol contains spirits. This is why you know, um, the native people, when they brought the alcohol, they called it spirits. Um, because indeed it is. You've probably seen some people kind of switch their personality a little bit when they um, start drinking and then the next day they're like, oh, you know, I probably behaved pretty bad. This is because um, the alcohol contains spirits, just like everything contains the spirit. So there will be some spirits, like in alcohol, and it depends on your intention that you set before you drink it, but they could be very damaging. Um, these spirits, the spirit of that particular alcohol could have been put in there at some point during the production process um, or just depending on the outcome of the alcohol, perhaps certain vibratory um, factors contain within them certain um, spirits. So this is why you could use something like um, alcohol or some type of uh, drug um, sacrament. So I'm talking about things like uh, cannabis, um, psychedelics, um, so things such as psilocybin or ibogaine, uh, 5-MeO, um, things along these lines. That you could consume something like this with the intention of connecting with the spirit of the divine with the intention of gaining whatever is needed to achieve higher and the highest level of divine alignment. You could consume these things ceremonially, using them with intention in such a way that you could connect with the spirit of that medicine, of that sacrament, and learn what it is that you need to learn. Now here's the thing about this. I've done it with water. When I got back um, after a period of enlightenment, when I was up in my um, cabin and I came back down, you know, I would ceremonially connect with the divine. Um, and so when I got back, I thought, well, you know, I could do this with water. Why would I not be able to? It's the same thing here. Um, putting the intention of having the spirit that must connect with you through this water. So then, of course, it worked. I, you know, poured on my water, put a blessing in it that I would connect with the divine, and then I did. I was enraptured up in a um, enlightened state just by setting my intent and putting this in the water. So then this made me think about communion very differently because I thought, you know, typically, let me give you an example here, most people, um, dogmatically without the spirit although I say that but nothing is not of the spirit but without the awareness perhaps of the spirit um, people will go through religious ceremonies um, and they put zero spiritual life within them there will be some people who will practice their um, religion every day, you know, okay, we do this, now we do this, now we burn this, now we do that. And um, there's no thought, there is just physical movements that are occurring dur during this process. There's no actual um, connection. Just the actual physical movements of the body are occurring. Now, um, I know the vibration is creation. And therefore, even the movements that you make, you know, if they are done with an intent, could um, certainly, because we're using the creative mind um, to visibly create the matter in your life. So even using those physical movements in a certain way, if there was an intent or a belief that was attached to it, could be a beneficial thing. However, anytime that we do something mindlessly, um, we are taking away from the spiritual element that could be uh, pervasive in that moment if we allowed it to be present. 
So to say certain sacraments are better than others, I or certain ceremonies, I would say, yes, of course this is true, um, but is this based on our belief? Is this based on the spirit of the medicine? Um, is it based on our intent? Is it based on the time that we're taking? Um, is it based on the planetary alignment at that current moment that we choose to do the thing? Um, there's so many factors that could play into it. But I will tell you this. If you were using any of these um, sacraments, but you were not using them ceremonially, meaning you were not using them for their truest intention, then it can cause problems. So let's say that you like to go out and get drunk and you just start drinking and you go out and of course one thing leads to another. Perhaps you end up doing things that um, take away from you and who you're meant to be when you are drunk. And maybe the next day you wake up and you're like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta stop doing that. But yet you continue to do these things. One measure that you could take beforehand is to set the intention that only what the divine wants for you will happen for you during that ceremony. That divine alignment would come from that ceremony. You can actually hold your hands over your glass, over your sacrament, over what it happens to be, and put in what it is that you want to get out of it. You can charge it up with the spirit of whatever it is. Everything's a gift from the spirit, including the sacrament. And so as you charge it up with your intent, ceremonially, let me explain. If you have your, let's say you're going to use alcohol, which I don't recommend. Um, I would recommend, if this is something that you're um, considering doing, that you start with cannabis. So you would take your hands, you would put them over your cannabis, your sacrament, and you would essentially pray, blessing um, the medicine, the sacrament, blessing it, and um, putting the intention of connecting with the divine through the spirit of the sacrament. And as you do this, and as you pray over it, and you hold your hands over it, and you hold that intention, believe it with no doubt that the intention that you put in is what will you'll get out of it. Then, when you smoke your cannabis, or consume it, however it is that you're going to, Expect the results that you wanted, but do not direct it. Just expect it. And as you do this, divine alignment and the spirit that brings this about will present itself to you. You might get downloads, you might get channeled messages, you might get something else. But when you set the intent that this is what I want out of this, meaning you're choosing something that is not even selfish. When you are choosing divine alignment, it is for the betterment of our world. And so through this intent of choosing, putting your hands over your sacrament, blessing it with divine love, blessing it and asking that you have the highest divine alignment connection possible while consuming the sacrament, being thankful that uh, for it before you've ever even consumed it and then consuming it and seeing the outcome, what comes. And it is through this process that you have now changed your sacrament from someone else's intention to your own. Do you understand? When you buy a bottle of alcohol off the shelf in a store, or when you go and you buy cannabis, 
or whatever else it is, it is not just going through your hands, is it? Meaning, it has not just come in contact with your mind and your mind power. It has come from someone else and their mind and their mind power. Now, if you happen to have someone who knows the power of the sacraments and is growing them out of a place of love, not money, and that they are growing them and they are putting such good intent, caring for them in such a caring way, well, what is going to be contained within your sacrament? All of those caring and loving energies. What a wonderful thing. So then we can add to that the intent of connecting with the divine if it's not already in there. And sometimes it is. But just to ensure that it is, because no one's going to take care of you but you, somebody might care for you in this way. But you could do yourself a disservice by not caring for yourself. I want you to want your life. I want you to choose and make decisions that bring betterment for you into your life. Therefore, being thoughtful about your life and the purposefulness behind the things that you're doing can really help to change things. So when you put the intent into your sacrament, you are taking one extra step, one extra layer of protection and connection. So as you hold your hands over your sacrament and you bless it and you ask for this connection, then you expect it, this is the result that you'll get. Now what happens when people are consuming sacraments that they are not blessing? Or when they go out with the intent of, I just want to get drunk, I just want to party, I just want to forget about the... Th what happens? Typically, people get their intention out of their sacraments, whether they realize that that's what it is that they're consuming or not. You want to go and get drunk and get wasted and forget your problems? That's probably what's going to happen that night, isn't it? Are you going to wake up with regret the next day? I don't know. I don't know you. Are you? When you consume things in a proper way, you can ceremonially, ceremonially consume something all day long. I'm not talking about smoking pot from morning till night. I'm talking about water, juice, coffee. What do you drink all day? Put the intent of the spirit within that product, whatever it happens to be. Because as you are doing this, you are imbuing the molecules that are contained within that cup, or however it is you're consuming. You are blessing them and you are imbuing within those molecules your intent. Your body absorbs it. It is received by the body. So now if you do this continually day after day, every glass of water that you have, you truly bless it. You put the intent of knowing that everything is a gift from the Spirit. Being so thankful, everything is a wonderful gift from the Spirit. Blessing your water. Blessing that you will get divine connection. I'm going to do that right now. I have a glass right in front of me, and so now I'm just holding my hands over it, putting the intent of the divine connection, connection, connecting with the divine Spirit through the consumption. The Spirit of the divine being put into this water, and as I consume it, it is going into me and I will gain the knowledge of that spirit. And so now as I drink this water and it goes down and is consumed within my body, I have given myself the gift of the spirit just by consuming and drinking this water that is here. And so now it's compelling me to speak about communion. Now when Jesus passed around his cup and he said, here's my blood, drink of it. The only reason that he was talking about blood was because his disciples were. And frankly, he was annoyed. It happened to be the Jewish Passover, the day that he was killed, betrayed. And 
his disciples were speaking about the Passover and they were all talking about the blood on the doorways and the blood on this and the blood on that. And Jesus was understanding at this moment, right at the very end of his life, that his disciples didn't understand the message. And he was rather heartbroken about this because he had been preaching to them and he had been with them for many years. He cared about them, they were friends. But at this moment when they were speaking of the blood, he realized they did not understand his true message. How can you speak of the blood? How can you speak of the suffering and of the killing when I have told you that there is only love? And so he was heartbroken about this and he realized they didn't get it. They don't get it. But it was the end of his life and there was nothing he could do. He had told them. He had spoken parables because he needed to so that they could be, um, so that they could evolve so that their meaning could become more true over time. But they were under such the heavy hand of the Roman governance that Christ's true message could not get through. It had to be flavored with the religious dogma of the Romans. Because indeed, had the truth pervaded the ears, eyes, and mouths of all of the people, everything about the Romans would have changed and ended. They were about control and power, whereas Jesus came and his message was a message of love. Not one time did he say, oh, you know, you better pay for these sacrifices over here, you're going to hell. No, he didn't mention hell not even once. He he, he only spoke of the love. Yeah, he got pissed. He got pissed and he was flipping tables one time because they weren't getting it and because they were making people pay for sacrifices because they were killing, because they weren't preaching about the love and he was pissed about it. Yeah, that happened. But it's the Last Supper and they're all sitting down and Everybody's talking about the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. And he realized, you know, okay, well, if they want blood, I'll give them blood. Here you go. Take this cup and drink it of me. Drink it in remembrance of me. Because tomorrow they are going to hang me on the cross. Here's your blood. And he passed it around. And they were silent. They were like, ooh, he's pissed. Guys, guys, I told you we shouldn't be talking about this. And so as they consume this wine, which is representing the blood, he said, do this in remembrance of me. You like the blood so much? There you go. But he wasn't doing it because blood was what he was preaching. Because sacrifice was what he was preaching. No, no, no. I'll be hung up on the cross tomorrow. I'll be the last sacrifice. Will that suffice you guys in your blood lust? So that we don't have to sacrifice anybody else anymore after that? You still want blood? Okay, well you guys can, uh, you guys can do con communion and you guys can think about the blood that you think is so precious um, so that you can keep that blood. But Jesus was annoyed, he was pissed when he served this cup of communion. However, it made its way in the Bible and a couple thousand years later, people are still doing it. And I understood after that period of enlightenment how we could truly use it as a blessing. Rather than, I'm just thinking of, you know, you go to a church service, depending on the kind of church that you're at, somebody's walking down the the the, the place, you know, carrying incense, doing this now, lift your hand up, raise it to the left, to the right, do the thing. It's all just ceremonially, um, th th there is no spiritual life within it unless you yourself use your mind to imbue it with spiritual life. You can use your physical body to walk through the acts and to do the things, 
But if the mind is not engaged, and that means the spirit is not there, it's not engaged within it, then it is pointless and you're wasting your time. But if you could see that everything is a gift from the spirit and you could put your belief and knowledge and know, oh, this is a gift from the spirit and actually be thoughtful about your life and about choosing and about the decisions that you make and actually be thoughtful about it, then you could change everything. Rather than just using your sacraments um, and imbuing them with divine love or whatever it is that you want them to contain, you can use this in your food, you can use this in your water. You could imbue the spirit into everything. You could put it in the clothes that you wear in a day. You could bless your clothes, um, put the spirit within them. It, it would, it, all these things will make changes within our lives because we're doing something different. We're doing something thoughtful and everything is a gift from the spirit. It's in everything every, anyway, so why not honor it, mention it, speak about it, and use it for your betterment in your life. So that's what I've got for you guys here today, talking about the sacraments. I think it's a very important thing to be thoughtful about your life, thoughtful about the things that you're consuming, and thoughtful about the preparations of food and other substances that other people have prepared and the intent that perhaps they put in it. This is why, you know, you go out to a bar, let's say you go out and drink. Well, first of all, you're having the manufacturer that made the alcohol, then you're having the buyer, then you're having the whoever purchased it from them, then you're having whoever made that drink for you. So it's going through many hands. This could be beneficial, this could be detrimental. You're in control, you choose, you decide what it is that you want to be consuming. So be very thoughtful when you do consume that you put the proper intent that is in it and it will counteract, it will completely change whatever was previously held in there when you do it thoughtfully. You can hold your hands over, your food, your drink, your, your sacrament, whatever it happens to be, and put your intent in it. And that's what you'll get out of it. So that's what I have for you guys here today. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, I have a daily podcast, All Things Spiritual. Um, please like, share, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You could even send this to a friend. Thank you guys for being here, and I will see you guys tomorrow.